and that's when it's too much. But um, I want to thank God for uh, that prayer this morning because um, that's when you feel the unity of the body coming together. I, I didn't feel each person's hands. I felt the Spirit of God in each person in this place. Amen. Isn't it a beautiful thing? Yeah, please silence your cell phones at this time. It's always the pastor's kids. George thought he's going to get away with something. Amen. Um, let's open in prayer again, even though we just came from there, because I don't like to start a message without prayer. Okay? And, uh, Father, we just, um, again, invite you to this place. It's, it's like, uh, uh, Lord, it's, uh, it, it doesn't bother me to repeat that over and over and over again, because uh, we're human, Lord, and you know that. And you know the things that the, the world has created to distract us, Father. And we need to be constantly reminded of these things. We need to be constantly reminded of why we're here. And Lord, we're here to hear you. We're here to hear you, Lord. We're here to take what we hear and apply it to our lives so that our lives can be what you've created them to be so that we can come back here and praise you for them, for the life, Lord, that is so amazing to have in you. Uh, how enriched we truly are to know the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And um, I just want to thank you for that. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for um, committing your life that we might have life in you. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the sacrifice you made. And thank you, Father, for sending your Spirit that we might experience you eternally now and uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to be in your presence in this place. And thank you for your presence. We ask now, Lord, as we're in your presence, that your word would just become alive in us. That it would be something that isn't... Uh, you know, it's funny, sometimes I read your word and I think, oh, I've read this before. I don't want to know that. I want to know what you have for me today. I want to know what you have for us today. And so, Lord, even the things I studied, even the things that I wanted to bring, if you have something greater, Lord, if you have something that just one person here needs over the other, I ask that you would bring out those needs. I know your word is alive and active. Lord, and I know that it moves through us. So, Lord, if somebody here needs something, Father, today, feed them with your word. And the rest of us cause us to thirst after it. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are in 1 Peter. we got a lot to cover, so we're going to stay there today, even though I want to take you other places. Amen. I want to start in verse 10. I know we read part of this, but remember I told you we're probably going to back up a little bit. We're supposed to be on verse 13, but I want to start in verse 10. There's, there's, um, you, you want to understand 13 uh, really through part of 2, but really to 5, to the end of 5. You, you, won't ex you won't understand it unless we back up to 10, okay? And I mean chapter 5, verse towards the end of the chapter. Um, once we hit uh, verse 13 in, in chapter 1, it leads us all the way through chapter 5. So, uh, But I want to back up to 10 so we understand it, okay? Is everyone there? Okay, it says, Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing. Amen? Isn't this funny? This was before Christ came, was speaking to the Old Testament prophets, amen, about the things that were going to be. I'm just going to share it with you, and then we'll finish reading it. How's that go? Is that better? Because you know I want to share it. I don't want to... Just come on. Okay. There's a beauty to what he's saying. I need you to understand it because the same Spirit lives in you with the same purpose. And you don't want to miss this, okay? All right. 
those prophets didn't have what we have. They didn't have what we have, okay? They experienced Christ. We just read it. The Spirit of Christ was within them so that they could speak about the things that were going to be. What they were speaking about are the times we now live in. Okay? Look, Jesus Christ was glorified on the cross. Amen? Amen. <laughs> See? He went, to, he went and, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. Right? The Father sent him back in spirit. Well, on the day of Pentecost, when the Father sent him back in spirit and truth, amen, like we read last week, okay? But hear me out. When the Father sent him back in spirit, he sent him on the day of Pentecost to live in those who believe, amen? Did he not? Right? But he didn't just send him to live in us. God is omnipresent. He sent the spirit into the whole world. Do you know why the Spirit is in the whole world today? Hmm? Because Christ's blood on the cross gives grace to all mankind. And so we are living in a spirit of grace where the Spirit of God lives in His people and in the world today. Amen? In Thessalonians it says that Jesus and the Spirit are being held back. Okay? Until the Antichrist comes. Why? We're being, he's being, they're being held back so that the last person who's going to get saved gets saved. See? And if the Holy Spirit came, not just to live in us, but to live in the world, amen? See? That means that the Holy Spirit's in the world doing the work of the Lord. That means that he's touching every life out there. He's omnipresent touching every life. Amen? Okay, And if he's touching every life out there, then he wants to truly live in the lives that say that they belong to him. Amen? Why? Because the Holy Spirit's out there working in every life, and he's working in the life of God, in us, so that we can go out and reach those that he's working in. Why are you here today, Alice? Because somebody God was working in touched your life. Amen? And what was happening before they touched your life with the gospel? The Holy Spirit was working in you. He was softening you to receive the gospel when it came to you. Amen? These prophets were prophesying about this time that we now live in, and they weren't there to live in it. They realized that it was for us who believe in this time what they were prophesying. And they still prophesied. Amen? And Francis, you and I, we need to realize something today. Okay? We need to realize what they realized, but we need to realize it in power. We need to realize what they realized, that the Holy Spirit lives in us and that he lives in the world today and that he's stronger than he that lives in the world, he that lives in us. Amen? And he can overpower the, the strongholds. He can overpower the drugs. He can overpower the, the sexual addiction. He can overpower, he can overpower, he can overpower the lying and the thieving and the, he can overpower the deception. He can overpower the things of the world, sister. Okay? But he needs us to trust in him. He needs us to let him fill us with his power. You know, when we speak the gospel, sister, you know what we should be doing? We should be speaking in power, the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in us. Because we know that he's gone before us. Amen? Who said it today in prayer? Daisy? He goes before us to prepare a table in the presence of our enemy. What does that mean? That means the Holy Spirit's out there working, calling all mankind to Christ. Huh? And he's preparing a heart, a table, for us to come and share the gospel with our enemies, the enemies of God. Amen? And what he's saying here concerning this salvation, our salvation, amen? is the ones who prophesied it in the Old Testament, they didn't get to have what we have. They didn't live in a time of grace. They didn't live in a time where the Holy Spirit was touching every heart. Matter of fact, most of them preached their whole lives and never won one person. Yeah, they didn't live in our time. They realized in searching intently in the Scripture that it was for us that they were prophesying. Amen? 
You know what that tells me, Daisy? You know what it tells me? Is you and I need to search intently so that the Holy Spirit in this time can work through our lives to reach the lives of those he's trying to reach out there. Amen? Yeah, you know what most people think today, most Christians today think? Oh, if I don't go, God will send someone else. Oh, if I don't go, God will, I'll pass the buck on to you, Alex. You can do it. Amen? That's, that's a lie straight from the pit of hell. Each one of us was called with a purpose. Amen? And we need to learn to seek with great care intensely into the Word of God. Amen? So that the Holy Spirit... You know what I always say? You want to know what I always say, brother? See, I study God's Word, but I have no expectations of my own. Okay? When, when He calls me even to be up here today, all right, I trust that what I studied, that He's put on my heart, that he's going to speak through me to tell you. Do you understand? That's the power of the Holy Spirit working in us. We don't speak for him. He speaks through us. You understand? Amen? Amen. All right, let's read it because you guys get carried away sometimes. And we need to make sure we're right on scripture, okay? Ten, right? Okay, concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace, see the grace? The era of time when the Holy Spirit would be present. Amen. When the Holy, when, who spoke of the grace that was to come to you, searched intently with great care. Amen. When was the last time? I got to repeat that. I have to push that, okay? Because I feel that the Holy Spirit is calling upon me to share it with you, okay? When was the last time? When was the last time? that you searched intently and with great care into the gospel. See? You'll never, ever be able to share the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ righteously with a dying world. And you'll never have a better opportunity than knowing the one you're going to speak about. And the only way to know him is to search intently and with great care to know him. Amen. Because anything else you share is thoughts, desires, and ideas that you got from the world. And they may sound good, and it may be as if you're serving God, but I promise you today you're only serving yourself and serving man. We need to know that we know that we know. So that when we share him with others, we know that we're sharing him in the power of the truth. You know when that power is truth to me? When I've experienced myself personally with God, the things I'm sharing with you. And I believe this to this day, and I will say it to the day he takes me home. No one has the right to share Christ with anyone if they haven't first experienced Christ in what they're sharing. Because if you haven't experienced Christ in what you're sharing and you're sharing a piece of yourself, you're sharing a piece of the one that you spend most of your time with. Okay? You're not sharing the truth, even if it sounds good. There's only one truth. See, the world's full of truth. Isn't it, Mike? It's full of truth. See? I could tell you things the world's doing, and you can go out and see it for yourself, and they're doing it. It's the world's truth. That's not God's truth. God's truth is not the world. See, when we spend time praying for things, if we listen to our prayers, a lot of it's worldly. A lot of it's from the world, and we're taking it before God. And I have to tell you something. God has no idea what you're talking about because God is not worldly. And he has no need for those things. When we truly search intently to find Christ, amen, to know his word and know that he is the word, right? Amen? That he's the way, the truth, and the life. And when we seek that life, you'll, you'll trip out, Nick. Your prayers will just change. The things we used to care about that we used to bring before God will become meaningless like they're meaningless to him. 
and real life, real life that he wants us to have. That's called the kingdom of God is within us. Amen. Real life he wants us to have. We'll start to pray about those things. Why? Because in searching intently and with great care into the scriptures, amen, brings us life so that God can impart life through us to others that he's calling. Amen. That's what this scripture is saying concerning this salvation. This is hard for me today. I'm just going to tell you the truth. This is hard for me. You want to know why? Hmm? Because the world's out there. And even though I don't want to be part of it, I still live in it. And it keeps every one of us from the life I'm talking about. Right? And you know how we can tell? You know how we can tell that the world is in us stronger than he that that lives in us should be? You know how we can tell? We can tell by the people around us. When was the last time you made a difference in someone's life? A real difference? When was the last time your life shared the gospel with the people around you? When was the last time somebody got saved? Because you shared Christ with them. Amen? And I'm not talking about you opening your mouth to talk about Jesus. I'm talking about you sharing your experience with him. With them and the power of the Holy Spirit and watch their life change. Concerning this salvation. Imagine these prophets, how amazing they really were, okay? Yeah, they felt the Spirit of Christ in them. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been able to speak. But knowing the whole time what they're speaking wasn't going to be there for anybody in their time. But they had to speak it that we would have the word to share today with others in this time of the Spirit living. Amen? Can you imagine? And they did it anyways. They did it knowing. This relationship that I'm talking about that we should be having with Christ through the power of the Spirit and His word coming alive in us. Amen? Okay, even the angels long to have this. Even the angels long for it. And we, in Christ, possess it. Amen? Let me rephrase that. That, That's wrong. That's a wrong analogy. We, in Christ, are possessed by it. Or should I say, by Him, by His Spirit. Amen? 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 Sister, you have so much more influence, so much more life in you to share with others than you'll ever know. There's something in us that just needs to step out of the way, amen, concerning this salvation. And the only way you're going to step out of the way is if you search intently and with great care into his word, amen? Amen? Are you ready? Where was I? 11 still? Let me find 11. I'm, I'm, oh, here it is. Okay. Trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glory that would follow. Amen? That's everything I just shared with you guys, really. Okay. He's talk, the glory is, is Christ on the cross. Amen? And they were searching intently of when this would come. They were hoping, with a godly hope, because the Spirit of Christ was in them, that they were going to live to see the day and to experience it. Amen? Because they were searching so intently into the Scripture to find that time concerning that. They wanted to be part of it. Amen? Amen? But in doing so, in searching the scripture, they came to the conclusion that it was not in their time and that it wasn't for them, but for us. Amen. You and I need to come to the same conclusion today. All right. Stop wasting our life. Stop wasting our time. Amen. For today is light, but darkness is coming. Amen. And we must work while it's light. Right. There's going to come a time when darkness overtakes the world. 
Look, I just shared something with you, Mike, and I've shared it with you a hundred times. You've heard it and heard it and heard it. You're like, man, this guy, every time I see him, I hear this. Okay? But Christ isn't going to come till the last person receives him. You want to know why? Because he would have died just for that one person. And he's not going to come before that, okay? But that darkness is coming, and we see it coming, don't we? We see the world becoming a darker and darker and darker place. We see less and less people coming to salvation. Okay? Everything the world is designed, everything we're living in is leading to his coming. See that? Okay? And we need to know. And we need to be ready. What does it mean to be ready? Daisy talked about it, right? I love that scripture. Don't you love that scripture? That scripture blows my mind because it's talking about the church. Five virgins were ready and five weren't. Five of them had the wisdom of God and their, their, the, the, the lamps, the, the clay jars were full of the spirit. Amen? Five of them were purchasing it from the world and it didn't last. Five of them were buying into things that people were preaching that they never experienced God about. It was all man. Right? Right? Which one are we? Are we searching intently about this salvation? Or are we being shared things that the other person is getting from man instead of from the Holy Spirit? Amen? You ready, Harry? Ready. Let's read some more. You're getting carried away. We need to slow you down. <laughs> it was revealed to them, 12, right? It was revealed to them that that very, that what, that, 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 that was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but God, but you, amen? When they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you, by the, by, the, by the power of the Spirit sent from heaven. Amen? Even angels long just to, to, let me just read it. Even angels long to look into these things. It's everything I just shared with you. They searched intently into the Word of God with great care, wondering when this time was going to come. Would they be part of it? They realized through the truth of the gospel, through the power of the Spirit of Christ in them, that that time was not for them, but it was to serve us. Amen? And then he twisted around a little bit, doesn't he, Peter? And he says, but guess what? That time is now. And the only reason you're here is because somebody shared the gospel with you through that power of that Holy Spirit that they were longing for in their day. You know what it's saying? Because of that, you need to search the Scriptures intently. Amen? You need to know Jesus Christ so that you experience Him. So that when you share Him, you share your experience. You share your truth. Amen? Amen? There's no greater way to share the gospel than to share your life with somebody. Your life in Christ. This means nothing. This is just a book. That's it. Unless the Holy Spirit reveals Christ to you through it. Because if he reveals Christ to you through it, that means that your life is being filled with the presence of God through his word. Amen? And that life is life eternal. That life you use to share the gospel with others. Otherwise, it's just a story. Amen? You know why most of us are here? Because somebody shared the gospel with us. And the only reason we accepted it is because we saw the life of the person sharing it. Right? Would you have accepted it if you didn't see the person's life? You know why we see the person's life and we accept the gospel? Because we want what they have. We want this Jesus they're experiencing. Right? See? But if we can't share him righteously. All right. Let's read on. This is actually the sermon now. You guys ready? That was just leading up to it. You see where it says, be holy? The title there? See, concerning this salvation, this is what we need to do. This is who we need to become. Amen? This is what we need to follow. This is who we need to share. Okay? Are you ready? Okay, it says, therefore. See where it says, therefore? That's why I had to back up. Therefore, prepare your mind. See, concerning this salvation. Amen? Amen? Therefore, prepare your minds for action. 
Isn't that beautiful? You know what came to mind, you guys? Huh? Holy. Be holy. Amen? Do you know what it means to be holy? To accept the things of God and have nothing to do with that which is evil. To accept the things of God and have nothing to do. Don't entertain it. Don't enjoy it. Don't be part of it. And, and for that, you need to prepare your mind for action. What does it mean to prepare your mind for action? It means to search the scriptures intently with great care. Amen? Because they will lead you away from the things of evil within, with, 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 which is with, with, within this world. Amen? You get it? Think about the things we're caught in, because we're caught in them. That's why I loved what you prayed, Francis, and that's why I, I piggybacked on it. Let, let's pray about the real issues. What is holding us in bondage? What is separating us from God? What in this world is keeping us uh, uh, chained to it? What's keeping us from hearing God when He speaks to our hearts? What's keeping us from sharing Him in this power of the Spirit? Amen? Because there's things doing that in each life here. And you can deny it all you want, and it's still just a lie straight from the pit of hell because you know the truth because the truth lives in you. Amen? Right? So prepare your minds for action. Prepare your minds for action. These right here, huh? what are these for? Right? We, the things we see literally enter into our souls. And we need to prepare our minds for action by not seeing the things the world sees, by not being involved. If we know the truth, it's time to walk in the truth. Amen? Right? Let's close a blind eye to those things and open the eyes of our hearts to the Lord. Amen? Mm-hmm. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Hey, let's rock out right now. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. You know why we can't see him? Because the godlessness and wickedness of this world is suppressing the truth. You ready? You can deny it all you want, but it's the truth. So we need to prepare our minds for action. We need to be self-controlled, right? I just explained all that too, didn't I? We need to be self-controlled. If you know that something in your life is leading you, I'm going to say, you know what the church would say, leading you to death or in death. You know what I, what I want to say? Leading you away from Christ, keeping you from Him, keeping you from hearing Him, keeping you from acknowledging Him, keeping you from sharing Him. Amen? If you know those things are doing that, then you need to have self-control. And you need to say no to those things. Amen? And in saying no to them, you're restoring your mind. Why? Because when you say no to them, you're saying yes to him. When you say yes to him, you're seeking him. Amen? Right? You get it? There's, there's, all right. Be self-controlled. Set your hope. Amen? See that? This is what I love more than anything, you guys. The hope right here is not something in the world. It's not. Francis, it's an eternal hope. Amen? See, we hope for that which we know he's prepared for us, right? We just don't have it in our life completely yet. But he sent the Holy Spirit as a deposit showing us what it will be, right? So in this hope, we want to live our lives according to what will be, right? Not what's here, but what we know we have in him. Amen? That's an eternal hope. Watch what it says. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Amen? I always say there's a two-party thing going on there. Commentaries only talk about the one thing. But I want to share the two-party thing with you, can I? Okay, the main one they're talking about here, Alex, is the hope of eternal life with Jesus Christ when he's revealed, when we go to be with him eternally. Amen? Right? But listen, brother, I have that here. When the Holy Spirit reveals him to me here, Now, amen, that's why I have the hope for then, because I experience him now. Isn't that beautiful? Right? If you're not experiencing God today, right now, you're missing out. 
And if you're not experiencing God today right now, let me tell you, the Holy Spirit that came in glory is here. And he's calling you to him to experience him. Amen? Amen. We, need to set up, we need to be set free. Paul, even us who love him, we have those things we talked about. We need to be set free from them so that we'll have a greater love. Amen? We need to seek more intently. We need to have more self-control. We need to have action and be prepared. Right? Don't get carried away. Let's read the scripture. I don't know why, Paul, but you get carried away every time I look at you. Mm-mm-mm. As obedient children, what does it do? What is it to do the work of the Father? To be obedient to Christ. Amen? Right? Look. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. This one hits home for me, and I want to share it with you. Okay? There was a time, because we did not have the power of the Holy Spirit, there was a time that we lived in ignorance. Okay? Did we know the truth? We did. It was called a conscience. We knew right from wrong. Okay? But that's still worldly. Now we have the Holy Spirit within us. Amen? And we know when it's wrong. So it's not ignorance anymore. It's ignorance. It's us ignoring the Holy Spirit when He's speaking to our hearts and wants to give us life. It's us ignoring the Holy Spirit when He's showing us that something's wrong. He shows us what the wrong in it and, and the harm that it causes and the people that it hurts, and we still ignore Him. Right? You want to know why we ignore him? Because we're not searching intently and with great care. Which means we're choosing in ignorance, in ignorance, we are choosing not to hear the Holy Spirit when he speaks to our hearts because we're choosing the sin over him. You know the thing you can't ignore? Is that Christ died for those things. He died to give you his life, to give it to you abundantly over those things. He died to set you free from those things. And you can justify them all you want, but you cannot ignore that. I don't even know why I said all that. I'm talking to the choir. Nobody needs to hear it. Do you need to hear it? Right? Amen? Look, at, I'm not here to bring judgment on anybody. And I'm not here to condemn anybody. I'm here to encourage all of us to seek Christ over those things because we know those things aren't right. Amen? Right? I'm no better than you guys. You know what's happening when I'm talking to you? Huh? And every face I look into, I'm looking into a mirror. It doesn't matter which face I choose, I'm looking into a mirror. Right? You get it? God is speaking to me greater, I believe, sometimes than he speaks to you. You want to know why, Paul? Because we're supposed to be setting an example for everybody here. And if we can't be in life and choose life to share life, then we're sharing something we have no right to share here. Right? You ready? I got to fly now. But just as he who called you is holy. See? You guys see that? What is he if he's holy? He's pure and righteous and he knows no evil. And that's why I told you guys that when you pray about certain things, he doesn't hear you. Because when you bring worldly things before God, he has no idea what you're talking about. It's time to lay those things down. Amen? It's time to surrender those things to him. Surrender your heart to him. It's time to open your heart to receive the things he has for you over those things that are far greater than those things. Right? The things I'm talking about are things that bring us into this hope eternally. It's talking about the thing that he brings you into the things that will be and can be in your life now. That you'll long for them eternally without the pressure of evil in the world anymore. Right? You get it? Don, you get it? Why are you hiding behind that man, Don? I think I need to step over here a little bit, like this. Uh-huh. <laughs> Paul, Paul's too skinny for you to hide behind. Amen. 
Paul needs to seek more intently so he can get a little bigger. Amen? Amen. Here we go. <laughs> I don't know where that stuff comes from. Okay, but just as he, just as he who called... Wait a minute. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in, so be holy in all you do. Amen? That's everything we read above. You need to shun those things in your life. We need, we need to shed ourselves. We need to be self-controlled. Amen? We need the renewing of our minds. You know, when I first got saved, Mike, I'm just going to share this with you. I, I think you might need this. I don't know. Just you and me are here. Nobody else exists, okay? But when I first got saved, I was so messed up, Mike. I was so messed up. I was so, like, so far away from the truth, so far away from experiencing God, even though he was touching my heart. I didn't think it was possible because I was so messed up. So messed up. But you know what I ended up doing? In my work, I remember rototilling this front yard to get it ready for sprinklers. And I hated it. It was so hard. The ground was hard. The thing was bouncing. It was, you know, it was pulling my back one way and jerking me another. And, I, and I'm out there and all of a sudden it just came on me and I started singing to the Lord. Restore my mind, Lord. And I meant it for the first time. Restore my mind, Lord, because I am so screwed up. I don't know how to get to you. I don't know how to get there, Lord. I, I've messed up so bad. My life is so messed up. There's no way to you. I don't know how to get there. And if you don't restore the things that I know and think, this person I've become, I'll never, I'll never know. I'll never get there. This has to be restored. This has to be fixed. Amen? And as I began to rototill the yard, it seemed like the rototiller dug in. It started getting easier. It started drawing a straight line, you know? And I just kept singing. But I have to tell you guys something. It didn't happen that day. I sang like that to the Lord for six months, a year. See, I never stopped because I felt his presence that day and I knew that that was where I needed to seek him, right? I knew that that's where I needed to take great care. He had to change all the things that I had become, all the things that controlled my life, amen? I needed to begin to know him and believe in him and I had to constantly ask for that over and over and over again. Let me tell you something, it wasn't worldly and he heard me and he delivered me from those things. I was delivered, Alex. Amen. And you know what's funny? It's God, you know. He's got a sense of humor, but he's still delivering me today. Amen. Over and over and over again. Why? Why? Because he's drawing me on to him. Amen. And where he is, there is no evil. There's only holiness. And he's holy and he was calling us to be holy. You want to know why he's calling us to be holy? Because we have a purpose. Just like those prophets had, we have a purpose in Christ. Amen? Our purpose is greater. They preached without help. We preach in grace. Amen? We, they preach a knowledge. We preach a life. See that? They preach without hope. We have nothing but hope in Christ Jesus. Amen? They preached a perishable seed. We preach an imperishable. I don't know if you get it, Em. Let's read some more. Since you, is that mine 17? Yeah? Since you call on a father who judges each man's work impartially, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. You know what he's saying right there, you guys? This is beautiful, and this is the main scripture for today. Okay, each one of us are being called by God individually. Amen. And you can't be saved because I'm saved. See, you can't be saved because I'm saved. And no one can hear the gospel unless we share it. Amen. You get it? And so we need to live as strangers in this world regardless of what anybody else is doing. We need to choose for ourselves. Amen. We need to choose for ourselves. Don, I don't know why, Don. Again, just you and me. I don't know where this stuff comes from, okay? But I don't care who's in your life that's holding you back. You need to choose for yourself. You need to choose to be a stranger in this world no matter who it is. Amen? And you need to choose to be holy in Christ regardless of what they're doing around you. And you need to be the man God's called you to be. And you need to exalt Christ in the eyes of those people. 
Amen? Because He's calling you to do it, and He's telling you how to do it concerning the salvation. You need to seek Him, and seek Him with your whole heart. And if you seek Him with your whole heart, you'll find Him. Amen? Amen? Let's read some more. You ready? What, you want me to pick on you next? I ain't got no problem with it. Let's go. Ready? Let's go. Let's go. Okay. I'm just going to read this quickly now because we know where we're at. We're in the Spirit. Amen? Are you ready? Since you call on a Father who judges each man's work impartially, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. For, for you know that it was not with perishable things, such not with look at what it's saying. Forget the silver and gold, anything worldly. Okay? Because you know that it was with, with not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life, handed down to you from your forefathers. You know what? I've got to stop. This, I, I've, this message hasn't even started yet. We're going to have to pick it up next week because I've got another hour. That's just reality. I'm sorry, but it's reality, okay? So tune in next week, same time, same place. Same channel. Amen? All right, but let's, but let's end with that last scripture. Let's end with that last. See, I, as soon as I read this, I know what's coming on the next page. You understand? And it's, another, it's, a, it's a whole sermon. Here it is right here. I want to share this with you, though. See, these are the things. Okay, we know that it was nothing worldly. 